The cranium is a rigid structure that contains three components. Brain tissue, which makes up 80% of the cranial volume, blood, both arterial and venous, which makes up 10% of the cranial volume, and CSF, which makes up 10% of the cranial volume. The volume of these th three structures place a modest pressure on the cranium. This is known as the intracranial pressure, or ICP, which is normally 5 to 15 millimeters mercury. Now, normally, if the volume of one of these components was to increase, the volume of the other two would decrease to maintain the ICP. But if a pathological condition was to occur and there was a significant increase in one of the components, it would then exceed the ability for the other two components to decrease. Therefore, ICP would start to increase. An ICP above 20 millimeters of mercury is the point where an intervention should occur. Some of the causes where you would have an increase in one of these volumes would be for brain tissue, a tumor or a blood clot, for the blood, the venous component would be a decrease in venous drainage seen in cases of heart failure or an increase in arterial blood supply in cases with hypercapnia and in cases with increased CSF this could be an increase in CSF production or a decrease in CSF drainage. Now let's look at a case that would increase intracranial pressure. If a person was to develop a brain tumour where there would be an increase in brain tissue above the 80%, both the blood and the CSF would start to drain, therefore decreasing their volume to maintain ICP. This is known as compensation. But as the tumour continues to grow, it'll eventually reach a size where the other two components cannot compensate, therefore ICP will start to rise. This is known as a decompensation state. One of the first side effects of an increased ICP is brain ischemia or a decrease in blood flow to the brain. Normally the brain is perfused with a blood pressure of 60 to 80 millimeters of mercury. This is known as the cerebral perfusion pressure, which is a sum of mean arterial pressure, which is 70 to 100 millimeters of mercury, and the ICP, which is normally 15. But as the ICP increases above 20, the perfusion pressure will decrease. The body will try to increase the MAP by increasing the blood pressure. But the rest of the body will sense this high blood pressure and wonder why is it so high. Therefore, it will tell the heart to slow down. So you'll get bradycardia. But as the intracranial pressure continues to rise, the brainstem will start to become compressed and becomes dysfunctional. Therefore, the respiratory rate will become irregular. These three signs are known as the Cushing triad or the Cushing reflex. If treatment does not immediately stabilize the ICP, the brain is likely to herniate and dire consequences will follow.